Hey you guys, it is Delancey. Welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be what I think is kind of like a staple in the booktube community these days, and that is fall book recommendations. I love to watch these kinds of videos, and so today's video I try to include books that I either have not heard too much about this year or I haven't heard mentioned whatsoever so that hopefully I can add something unique to this conversation and a new book to your fall TBR. So we have YA adult, some fantasy as well as a lot of retellings. So without further ado, let's get into the books. So the first recommendation on my list is going to be The Dark Descent of Elizabeth Frankenstein by Kirsten White. This is a YA retelling of Mary Shelley's Frankenstein, so perfect right around Halloween. This is also one of my all-time favorite books. It's on my favorite shelf over on Goodreads. It's that serious. So we are reading from the perspective of Elizabeth Frankenstein, and if you know the original story, she is, I think, the adopted sister, and I guess you could say eventual lover and wife of Victor Frankenstein. Stein. And if you know how the story goes, Elizabeth unfortunately gets the short end of the stick. But this is a phenomenal retelling. I feel like every twist and turn and reveal really succeeds in furthering the plot. The stakes keep getting higher and higher and I feel like the tension just builds throughout. I was very nervous while reading this book in a good way. I also loved Elizabeth as a YA female protagonist. I feel like she is very unique. She is resilient and resourceful and very clever at times. And if I had anywhere to go this Halloween, I would probably dress up as her because I think she is such a fun Halloween costume idea. There's also a really great female-female friendship in this book. I think the author really has a fondness as well as a talent for writing these kinds of fictional relationships. In terms of the setting, the atmosphere is very dark and seedy. I picture a lot of fog and everything kind of painted in grayscale. Additionally, I think the book does offer some really interesting commentary on what life was like as a woman in 18th century Europe, which is pretty cool. In terms of the writing, the second half is really fast paced, but the first half is definitely on the slower side. And I know that that is an issue for some people, but I actually think it really serves the story. It really pulls you in, it really roots you into this fictional world and it really gets you invested in the characters, which I think is really complementary to the fall season, a nice slow burn, a, a very atmospheric read, I think pairs really nicely with Autumn. Next up on the list we have My Plain Jane by The Lady Janies. The Lady Janies is an author trio that consists of Cynthia Hand, Jody Meadow, and Brody Ashton. I think I got their names right. And this author trio is really well known for their lighthearted, fantastical, and very comedic retellings. And this book specifically is a YA retelling of Jane Eyre mixed with ghost hunting. So of course it's going to be fantastic for the fall season. So this is the story of, of course, Jane Eyre. And Jane really dreams of living a very simple, quiet life. She just wants to go and work as a governess, but she has the ability to see ghosts. And the Royal Society for Ghost Hunting catches wind of this, and throughout the novel, they are trying to convince Jane to join their ranks. Now, here's the thing with this book. I, I did have some issues while reading it. I wasn't a huge fan of the plot or the story. I felt like it was a little disorganized and a little messy compared to other books this author trio has written, but it's still a really fun time and I'm still going to keep it on this list because I think you should read it for its atmosphere as well as its comedy and its humor. I think this is a really great, fun, casual read, something to break up. Uh, let's say if you're reading a lot of thrillers, or horror throughout the season, you can really turn your brain off to this book, which is nice. And if you want to read what I think is this author trio's best book, then I would recommend picking up My Lady Jane. However, it's not going to have the fall vibes that My Plain Jane brings to the table. If anything, I think My Lady Jane is probably best read maybe in the wintertime. Moving on to the next book, we now have The Guinevere Deception, another book by Kirsten White. This is the first book in a YA series that is a King Arthur retelling. We are reading from the perspective of Guinevere. Word on the street is that King Arthur is in trouble. Someone is out to get him. So Merlin comes up with the idea that he's going to send Guinevere in to marry King Arthur, but really she is acting as his bodyguard. On top of that, 
Uh, Guinevere is not really who she says she is. Her true identity is a mystery, even to her. She's actually a changeling, which is kind of a fun twist. I would say read this book for the atmosphere. I don't know entirely why, but King Arthurian universe, uh, that universe for some reason really gives me cozy fall vibes. I think it's the castles, the big fireplaces, the cloaks and the animal pelts and knights going off to war. It's very transportive. So if you're looking for escapism this fall season, I think this is a great book for you. Another great female-female friendship in this book. There's also some gender bending going on, which is really fun. And there is a really interesting love triangle, though I guess you could say love square, depending on who you ask, that I think is really fun to discuss and analyze with other people who have read the book. And on top of that, the second book in this series is actually coming out in November of 2020, so perfect timing. Is it just me, or is anyone else like really soft and only likes their hot beverages at almost room temperature, but just slightly higher? No, just me? Okay. <laughs> so the next book, or I guess books, I'm gonna recommend are Terry Pratchett's Discworld books, specifically the books that deal with the witches. So I'm gonna try and attempt to explain what the Discworld is. The Discworld is this fictional world that Terry Pratchett has created that a lot of his books take place in. I think Terry Pratchett is best known in the book community here online for co-authoring Good Omens, which is really popular online, but a good portion of Terry Pratchett's work comes from the 41 books that he wrote that take place in the Discworld. And what's really neat about these books is that you can read them in order or you can read them out of order. They function as standalones and there's sub-series within this overarching series that deal with certain characters all throughout the Discworld. So you have books about a wizard, there's the Grim Reaper, City Guard, uh, there's a university, and there's even like a book or two about the postal system, and there are books about witches, and that is what I'm recommending you read. Specifically, The Women of the Lanker Coven, I think that's how you pronounce it, The Lanker Coven. And these books are weird, they're wacky, they're silly, the writing, I have not read another book quite like Terry Pratchett's Discworld books. Thus far, I have read The Weird Sisters, Witches Abroad, and Carpe Jugulum, which deals with vampires, which is kind of cool. And I think Witches Abroad is like a wacky retelling of Cinderella, which is also pretty cool. Now, I'm not recommending you read these books for the atmosphere whatsoever. I'm recommending you read them for their humor and their fun. And these stories just so happen to revolve around classic Halloween characters like witches and vampires. Plus, Terry Pratchett is a really famous fantasy author, so if you're looking to read more fantasy classics, he is a really fun selection. And I only wish that more people talked about him. Next up on the list, we have another YA book, and that is The Cruel Prince by Holly Black. This is a YA booktube classic that I'm sure most people are tired of hearing about, but I'm just gonna keep talking about it. This is for all of my romance readers out there, also people who really like fae stories. This is the story of a human girl named Jude who gets kidnapped at a young age and is raised in the fae world along with her sisters. And as Jude grows up, she is bullied a lot by the fae for being human. And Prince Cardin, specifically, one of the fae princes, he specifically becomes her arch enemy, but their playground feuding eventually evolves into real life politics and the stakes get so much higher. Jude as a protagonist is awesome. She is so much fun to read. She's feisty and calculated. She's really smart. She's a really, really interesting character. And of course, I love Prince Cardin as well. I would recommend reading this definitely for the escapism that I mentioned earlier. No doubt the Fae world and Fae politics are very transportive, but I think where this book really shines is gonna be the relationships between the characters, especially the romance between Jude and Cardin. It's massive hate to massive kind of weird, kind of different love that they feel for each other or whatever it is they have. <laughs> I would recommend specifically the first book in this series for the fall season. I feel like that one, relative to the other books, exudes the most autumnal feels and I can just see myself curled up with the Cruel Prince and, and 
some tea and a blanket either in the early morning or late at night. I think it totally exudes great fall vibes. And the final book in this recommendations list is going to be Nevernight by Jay Kristoff. This is an adult assassin fantasy novel. It's the first book in a series. And granted, I've only read the first book thus far, but I absolutely loved it. It's one of my all-time favorites. When it comes to the first book specifically, this is boarding school setting meets ruthless assassins. We are following Mia Cover, who has been trained to become an assassin from a very young age. She gets into this secret school, and throughout the first book, we are following her as she undergoes the trials and tribulations of being a student there, as well as trying to pass all of her deadly examinations. But the bigger plot at hand for the entire series is that Mia wants to become an assassin so she can extract revenge on the people who murdered and completely destroyed her family. So nothing like a good bloodthirsty revenge plot for the fall. I'm gonna warn you now, the book is very graphic, bloody, and violent. However, it is also a lot of fun. The writing is different and I feel like that aspect specifically is very polarizing. People either love the book for its writing, like myself, or they're very annoyed by it and it just does not click with them. So you're either gonna be one or the other. Hopefully you're gonna like it. There are a lot of footnotes throughout. The narrator frequently addresses you directly as the reader. It's very tongue-in-cheek and at times honestly kind of funny, even though people are getting their arms hacked off left and right. I think what makes this a really great read for the fall season is going to be the atmosphere. It's very dark, gloomy, and grim, which pairs really nicely with the dark, gloomy and grim undertones we often associate with the fall season. Well, you guys, that is going to do it for my fall book recommendations. Hopefully one of those books you can add to your TBR this autumn. Let me know in the comments down below what you plan on reading in the coming months, and I will catch you in the next one. Bye!